Hey there, Designaholics. I'm Carrie Lawless, and on today's Designaholic DIY, I'm going to show you how to make this fabulous piece of abstract art. Stay with me. I am so excited to get started. So we are gonna use these two blank canvases right here, 30 by 40. So that means this thing is gonna be 60 by 40 overall. So my inspiration though for the colors only is this piece right here that I got from Kirkland's. So what happened is we are staging a house and we're using this piece, which I really do love, um, but I had nothing to go with it. So I was looking around for some abstract art maybe in these colors and everything I found was so expensive. So if you go to Anthropology, Z Gallery, Horchow, uh, something like this is gonna cost you a minimum of 800 and it's just gonna be a print. It's not gonna be original for sure. So I decided just to look around and get some ideas and to recreate what I'm looking for to match that. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is show you what I got. So I got these, um, these are from Hobby Lobby, Master's Touch, Grandeur Collection. So basically, I'm trying to see how wide the side is. It is, okay, it doesn't say. Looks like about an inch and a half to me, and um, it's really thick. And that is what's gonna make this look so rich in the end. So don't get the thin canvases. These are $59.99 a piece, and we got them half off, so $30 a piece, 60 bucks for something this big. Now all we have to pay for is paint and a little aquarium gravel. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna open this up. It's actually not aquarium gravel, but it's from Dollar Tree, and it looks like gravel. I can't wait to show you that little surprise. And in case you're wondering if you have to go buy artist paints, you absolutely do not. We are using chalk paint. What I like about painting with chalk paint is if you let it sit up a bit, you get the texture, like you're using an acrylic texture medium, but it's super cheap and dries super fast. All right, I'm gonna finish opening these up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna break this up into a top section, a bottom section, and then we're gonna break up the center with that gravel that I was talking to you about. So the colors I'm using for the most part, now this is just for the base, because I'm gonna come back in with all these colors and accent. But for our base coat, we're gonna use Waverly Ivory, which I don't have the bottle, but we're gonna use Waverly Ivory. We're also gonna use, this is Folk Art White Adirondack. And then the third color, oh, this is my new favorite color. It is Sage Chalk Paint by Folk Art. So um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and coat the top, and then actually I'm going to coat the bottom and then come back and do the top. So um, get started right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is give myself like some kind of line so I stay in check with what's going on. I'm trying to do about maybe two thirds of the green on the bottom and about a third of the white on the top. It's gonna to change as we go, but I'm just gonna kind of give myself just like some kind of line to follow when I start putting the rocks down. All right, like I said, it's gonna change. Kind of looks like some awful flame job, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna start with the Folk Art Sage. I'm just using a big giant brush. Does not have to be a chalk paint brush. We are just applying it. So for something this big, I'm just gonna use the biggest brush that I have, which is just this cheap little brush. I probably got it from Dollar General or Big Lots or something like that. All right, and now look, you really wanna make sure that you cover the sides of your canvas because that is what you're gonna have to do to make it look professional. And then, like I said, I'm just basically gonna follow these lines. Let's put a little heavier on here. Now, I'm about to use a tool that 
uh, may be difficult to find, but because it's a it's a body shop tool primarily, but you can just purchase any kind of a um, putty knife or you know anything wide. Um, I'm gonna use a couple of different sizes because I cut them. These are Bondo spreaders. So Bondo is something that you use in a body shop to um, fill in dents and stuff like that. All right. The other color I'm gonna use down here is the Waverly Ivory. I think what I'm gonna do is just apply it with this spreader. And I can just drip it. I just want, I just want it to be thick and textural. Now these are not the only colors we're using. This is just gonna be our base. And then we're gonna come back with some additional colors that complement this scheme. Um, I'm also gonna do this again with the green just to get it even thicker. And I'm gonna go in and out of the white, the ivory. Since this canvas is so big, I just decided to come on the other side. And um, what I'm trying to do is to not mix the green into my white paint. Sorry, ivory, ivory is what I'm using now. All right, now I'm gonna add in the white. I don't know on camera if you're gonna be able to see the difference. I can definitely see it in person. And we're just trying to get a little depth and dimension going here, rather than one solid color. Okay, on to canvas number two. Now this is the cool thing, if you don't like your shapes, I mean, it's paint, you just change it. It's very forgiving, especially since it's chalk paint and has so little drying time. Now on to the other side. There we go. Now what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a blow dryer and I'm going to blow dry this a little bit just to get it to be like, you know, thick and textural and then we'll go from there to start pulling on it. Just to explain what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of getting a feel for how thick it is it's, you see how it's got that kind of body, um, which of course it had some of that because of you know being in a container for uh, a day. But um, anyway, I'm just gonna kind of pick this up. I'm gonna pick it up on the spreader and then I'm gonna lightly just basically glaze over the top. I'm gonna touch it though, but just very lightly. If you press down really hard and just keep doing that, you're gonna blend it where there's no variation. So, and again, if you do that, no big deal. Just go do it again, go right on top of what you did. So I'm gonna blow dry and pull, and I'm just gonna get a feel for, you know, how thick it is. And um, anyway, we'll see. Okay, I like how this is coming out. And remember, it's gonna be softer because I'm gonna go over this with paints, essentially kind of making a glaze over it. Not shiny glaze, just more like um, a softening effect. All right, and so what I'm gonna do though, I need the sides to match the top. So I'm gonna, when I pull something off of here, I'm just gonna kinda, you know, pull it onto the sides as well. So I'm just picking up and pulling it, but you, I don't know if you can tell how light I'm um, uh, pressing, very light. Like I'm just barely letting the paint touch the surface. I'm not smashing really, tiny bit, just not much. So I'm going sideways with my spreader so that I get in that little triangle piece at the top. 
I'll dry it a little bit more. So this hair dryer in terms of cooking would be your thickening agent. Like imagine it like cornstarch or something. Hey, I really hope you're enjoying this video. And if you are, we would love it if you would subscribe. Also, please like and comment, but definitely subscribe. I think you can buy these from Harbor Freight. And just if you ask them for Bondo spreaders, you should be able to find them. What's great about these is I can literally take a scissors, a heavy duty scissors and cut them whatever width I need and just have a variety of sizes sitting there. So what's happening here is I've got a lot of white here and a lot of green here. So in this case, I'm gonna pick up a little white, throw it in the green, pick up a little green, throw it in the white. I talked about not blending side by side, but I'm not blending. I'm just picking up and using because I've got too much of one and too much of the other. The way you know when chalk paint is getting thick and drying out is when it starts to lose its shine. That means the water's drying out. So if you need to be able to visually tell when to pull, that's what you wanna look for, is that it's not so shiny. All right, so here's a critical point where if I pull too many times, I'm gonna end up with one color. So just go slow if you need to, so you don't make that mistake. And this is gonna be the last time I do this because I will certainly over blend if I do it again. Hit this with the hair dryer. I'm just adding into the places that don't have anything, and then uh, that's about it. So now we are moving on to canvas number two. Sometimes if you just put a little too much, you can just take a little bit of it off and then go ahead and have more area to spread. Anything that thick, I don't know what in the world I was thinking, I'm just gonna be over blending it to death. All right, here we go. This part's a little wet, I'm gonna let it sit up a little bit and then we'll come on the other side to do the light. That is it for this step. I'm gonna go ahead and dry these really, really well. We're gonna put um, some colors on top to glaze over it, give it some depth and dimension and additional color. And then we're gonna do our rocks in the middle. A couple of tips here that I wanna share with you. So as I'm drying this, it is pooling back over and getting you know, smooth on the tops of the texture. If that's a look you like, and there's nothing wrong with it, it's just not what I'm going for, that's fine. Just let it pool over. Because what it's doing, it's wet and it's self-leveling. I'm not really interested in that look. So these parts right here that are very smooth on top, hope you can see it. I'm just gonna pick it back up and then it's called skip troweling. I'm basically skipping it over the top of the canvas. Now, if you can see, it's a rougher texture, whereas here it's smooth. Again, I'm gonna pick it back up and skip it, skip trowel, and that's gonna give me that crunchier texture that I'm going for. Now look, this is a super important tip I'm about to tell you. On something like this, 
these canvases are kind of expensive. Uh, you don't want to waste a lot of time on some big project like this, just starting like this. What I did, and I'll show you toward the end when we have the finished product, I used a much smaller canvas and I only did one. Because if I was gonna mess this thing all up, I didn't wanna mess up this kind of big display of canvas. So um, that's another thing that you should uh, consider as well, is starting on something small, perfecting it, and then chances are, I mean, if you're anything like me, you're gonna wanna make changes, and you make your changes before you get to this level. All right, I've already gotten started a little bit on this corner, and uh, I just wanted to test it out a little bit and see what it was looking like. And I like the colors that I'm using here. Um, we did force dry it, which caused some crackle to, to occur. You can see it here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, there's crackle. There's actually a whole lot more on this one right here. You can probably see this. But um, anyway, the texture is a little bit flatter than I want it in some spots. I probably needed to keep going back in and reworking it so that that didn't happen. But in the end, I think it's, you know, the colors and everything, it's all going to be really pretty. Um, okay, so these are the, I'm going to work with these three greens. I'm just using various brushes, just, you know, acrylic brushes. This is Folk Art Acrylic Paints. And I'm just dipping it in and I'm just going to kind of drag it. Now, you know, this is just gonna require some discretion. I'm using a mist spray bottle. I got this at Hobby Lobby, but I'll see if we can get a link if you're interested. If they sell it on Amazon, we'll find out. Um, so I'm just basically gonna take these three greens and put enough water to move it around how I want. And then I'm gonna leave enough of the original sage showing and um, I can even go back in and add some whites if I want to create um, more of like a, you know, an aged kind of driftwood feel. The white is going to be the thing to do that. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just um, using the, I'm carrying the brush like this almost like it's that spreader. I just needed something smaller. And then I'm wetting it and I'm just kind of like loosely dragging it right on top. I'm trying to skim. I'm not trying to cover everything. Sometimes you do cover everything by accident, but all these pretty coastal blues and greens with the white. Mm. Love these colors. I just want to say that it's really important to keep stepping back from the work that you're doing. When you're right up on something, it's almost impossible to see it. When we used to faux paint entire walls, we would get off that ladder over and over again because you lose perspective when you're up close. Also, if you're being inspired by something else and you want to stay close to what you're doing, you want to look at the two pieces together, um, at least frequently enough. So, all right, so what we've got going on is this piece is much grayer but I think there's enough of the gray in this one to be fine. I'm okay with it. I don't think I want to gray it out anymore. All right. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of white and gray. Just try to contrast the whites that are there. There is variation of white and cream going on here. I'm going to try a little section of gray. I'm gonna wet it first because I really need that gray to not stick. I mean, it's okay. I might put a little bit here and there. I might add a little of this, kind of yellowy brown. Let's see what happens with this. Mm. Not sure how I feel about that. And then of course, again, if you get too much of one thing on there, we're gonna go back with some white and just did not, did not mean to pull that green into there. That's okay though, because we're just gonna cover it. There you go. All right, and then of course I'm gonna hit this with some white. And then what that's gonna do is give me that warmth of color, but, um, but wash it out. I like it this way. I think it's looking really good. Definitely needed the warmth. All right, so again, I am introducing a totally different color. What I don't want is to have this band of white around. So whatever I do to what's next to it, I have to drag that around to the side so that it's uh, one cohesive feel as you're turning and looking at the different sides of the canvas. I'm 
which I do think I'm going to hit this with more white. This little section of brown is kind of intense. So I'm going to get some heavy white going on here. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Now the other thing is if you're trying to have two different pieces that are cohesive and they have to look good together, you definitely want to keep looking at them together. I'm telling you it's so easy to get off track. You think you're doing the same thing you did before and you look at it and you go, mm, not even close, right? Honestly, I just think I could have used that bigger brush since I'm trying not to get the stripey effect because this is so big this canvas is so huge I think I'll be better off with this brush I'll try it yeah definitely better off well glad I figured that out right at the end can you believe how little paint it took to do this I mean we <laughs> I think we use like a fraction of a two ounce bottle of these colors Super, super inexpensive project to do. It's rock time. So this is actually the whole rock step. The first step to the rock step is we are going to um, be putting these two colors. These are both um, chalk paint colors. We've got Waverly Mineral, Waverly Fawn. So it's these two right here are going to be in combination. And I'm going to make a big section of this color, these two colors, that I'm going to then put the rocks on top of. So we don't want it to be like really intense. And I'm going to divide it and go over both the white and the green. On the sample I'm going to show you later, I had done all mineral and it just to me looked like a gray glob. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not my favorite by any means. Again, following the line that we created with that pencil earlier. It's easy to get off track, for me anyway, with a paintbrush in my hand. I'm much better off following a line I created before. And I had all three of these about the same, and we are not gonna make that same mistake this time. So what I'm using here, these are pebbles. Um, they had glass ones, I don't think these are glass. I don't know what they're made of. But anyway, I got this from Dollar Tree, so this was $1, and this should be enough to do both canvases and stuff. This I actually found in the, what section was that? Like where the floral and all that is. They have a bunch of base fillers that are like rocks and stuff. Okay, so here are my two things of rocks. Trying to get similar amounts. Then I'm gonna take the mineral. Don't know if that's enough, but I'll find out. And I'm gonna take the fawn. All right, now, when I did this before, I did not blend two colors, so I'm just gonna have to see what this comes out to be. Hopefully something that we like. And I am gonna put a whitewash over the whole thing anyway. So, just kind of soften out. All right, so far I like that. I'm not gonna know until I step back and I can't pick it up right now because it's wet. So I am going to move on to the next one. I did wind up using a tiny bit more than the one bag. So if you do go to Dollar Tree, get two bags, just in case. I'm gonna have my line kind of follow this one so that it looks like it just continues on. I 
just gonna apply the gravel as I go because because it's already wet and I think it'll give it a little more stick to might as well So I'm digging this gravel out of the container with a brush. That's not recommended. I just, um, like a plastic spoon would be better, but um, this is what I've got in front of me, so that's why I'm doing it, but not recommended if you wanna keep your brush nice. If you don't like the shape, hurry up and wipe it with white, uh, white wet uh, paper towels while it's still wet and fix it. All right, it turns out all of our gravel was falling off. So apparently I did not have enough paint. Um, and, um, when, you know, when I put them on initially, so they just start, all started falling off. So what we're gonna do is just go on top of it with paint, which is what I did to my sample piece anyway. So I already know how that's gonna turn out and it'll be fine. And um, I am going to hit it with a blow dryer uh, normally you could just let this air dry, but we're trying to get this finished. And um, then we're going to whitewash it and I think we'll be done. Okay, so I'm gonna use the two, uh, the Waverly Ivory and then the Folk Art Adirondack chalk paint. And I'm just gonna, um, now look, I have to move quickly on this, just so you know, normally you would wait until it was really dry, but I just need to get this finished up. So it's not quite dry enough, so I gotta go fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray water on this, just spread it out kind of thin, bring it up and down on the other colors. I just love all these colors when they lose their intensity and they just get so soft. All right, so that's it. Let me dry it real quick and just see if it came out too light. Hopefully it's just right. Ice is fast. Here it is. What do you think? I'm so excited. I think the colors are so perfect. I mean, these aren't even gonna be next to each other. They're gonna be on two separate walls. I still need to finish the other canvas with the white over that center part, but I like how putting the white over the whole thing just brought it all really close together. It's super soft and I love it. I really wanna know what you think. I hope you have found this helpful. Hey, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and wait one more minute. We're about to show you this art installed on the wall. Hope you like it. I'm Carrie Lawless. Thanks for watching.